Oh, there we go. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hi, Welcome everybody. To How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, J. Anthony Brown. How are you? I'm doing very well, Sybil. What's going on? You know, I'm still in Atlanta looking for a house in Atlanta. And uh, a shout out to all the realtors who've been working for me because you're telling me you want a, <laughs> you tell me you want a three bedroom. They'll say, we know you want a three, but here's a seven bedroom that's a really good price. <laughs> And you come back and say, you know, I don't want this house. Yes. Okay. And for all those realtors he's giving a shout out to, let's say a prayer for them too. Yes, because they're, they're going through it. Yeah. Yeah. Any anytime somebody has to work for J. Anthony Brown, we always say a prayer um, <laughs> because they are put through the ringer. It is Tuesday. It's May 25th, 2021. Do you know where you were one year ago today? That is our question yes. of the day. And ask people, um, do, you, do you remember where you were when you watched this video of the murder of George Floyd? Today, um, oh, actually, for the last several days, there have been uh, all kinds of celebrations and gatherings and marches and moments of silence held in memory of George Floyd, the man right. killed by Minneapolis police one year ago today. It was Memorial Day. Right. It was Monday. Uh, it was Memorial Day night, and um, George Floyd uh, died on that day, May 25th, 2020. Right. But so, more important to me, Sybil, do you know where you were when they put Tim Scott on uh, on the committee to pass the law, <laughs> the George uh, Floyd law. When I told you, I told you when you first put his fucking name on there, Tim Scott can't do shit. And and God bless um, uh, what's her name from California for working with him because um, what is her name? I can't think of her name. Um, um it is uh, uh, Bass, Karen Bass. Karen Bass. You know, she's working with a guy who's got to go on the phone. Boss, can I do that? Is, is it okay for me to give him that? You know, if you don't, if you don't make these police accountable, nothing else makes sense to and, me. And, and Jay is talking about the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which uh, the, the House uh, put together almost immediately after all of this started to happen uh, with George Floyd and the demonstrations and what have you. And the the Republicans came back with a Tim Scott led law that has <laughs> has absolutely no teeth in it, and and they were practically laughed off the floor um, with this law. But but Tim Scott is working with um, Karen Bass, the Congresswoman from California, as well as Cory Booker, the Senator from New Jersey, and uh, they are still working on it. This is the bill that uh, Joe Biden said a month ago he wanted on his desk today. Uh, this was the deadline he was setting for them. And uh, here we are. The family visited the White House today, and I'm sure they were, you know, many people were hoping, especially those within the White House, hoping that they had a bill to sign. Um, they have not. Uh, and I the bill is I being... You, it's not going to pass. They're not going to pass. And if, it, if they do pass anything, you know, so well, you know, and I know, it's going to be so watered down that it's just straight bullshit. And the most important thing in that bill is to make sure these police uh, get away from being uh, totally um, uh, immune yeah, to the crimes that they commit. Qualified immunity. Well, qualified immunity. And yeah. if you don't have that, then you really don't have a law. And I found out that that law was actually put in doing um, reconstruction so that police could beat the shit out of black people, black people. and yeah. get away with it. Yeah, and that's, that law, that's a Jim Crow law. And it's still on the books. Yeah. It's still on the books. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, they tried with the with the Republicans to do something in the form of removing chokeholds and, and other things that are in the Democratic bill. Um, but it is pretty watered down compared to what the, the Democrats are asking for. And that, as Jay has mentioned, um, probably the most um, the most damning of the changes that they're asking for is uh, the removal of the qualified immunity. And so. Um, <clears throat> Well, yes. when when Republicans looked around and said, "Who could we be in charge? Who could we? Who could represent us? Where's the one silent Negro that really ever never has anything to say about anything?" Well, he's the only Negro. He's the only Negro. I mean, that would be Tim Scott, who has no power. And if you don't have Mitch McConnell and some of the other top of Republicans working on this bill, you have Nathan. 
You have <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> right. right. Um, but as, as we mentioned today, um, a lot going on. Um, they, you know, marches over the weekend leading up to today. A year ago today, the 46 year old man killed by the former Minneapolis police officer at the scene of the crime. Um, they had uh, uh, people gathering there, um, people bringing flowers to cup foods, uh, the, the uh, supermarket, uh, that the, the corner store. Uh, that uh, George Floyd, where it all started with the, the alleged counterfeit bill and all of that stuff. Um, so, and as they were having this memorial, uh, shots rang out um, near where they were gathered and one person was shot uh, and um, managed to get to the hospital on his own and um, was, was supposed to have been taken care of there. But the craziness is, is that, you know, we're, we're seeking for uh, this nonviolence and unfortunately violence broke out as, and as a non -violence, yeah, yeah. Uh, and to stop the violence and not just the violence between police and citizens, it's to stop the violence completely. And crazy on this time. day, crazy, crazy time. On this day, you would hope that they would, but it did yeah. not happen. So, um, uh, and we have pictures of the uh, folks who were, uh, gather today at cup foods i believe we have that one yeah and yeah. there that's it um where people were gathered uh to pay their respects flowers and um, people just kind of coming together and you know having their own moments of silence and what have you and in honor of this man we have this picture here yeah and now we got to be um more more in the loss of green uh which was another killing yeah and you can say it now we can just sit up and start mourning now for the next one because there'll be another one. oh there will be another but there, there Jay, be the another. crazy thing is the ronald green thing happened way Two before yeah and yeah, so before george floyd right absolutely absolutely and uh the things that they did to this man and and the ability to hold on to this video um, just as in with Andrew Brown Jr., you know, um, the judge deciding who gets to see the video and when. In this case, the Louisiana State Patrol, they have this video. And luckily, years. luckily, it has years. gotten out. And now uh, the, a civil rights uh, case has been filed in, in that case. All right. So um, we are hoping to talk to C.K. Hoffler. Uh, today. She is the president of the National Bar Association. She was there at the White House. She was in the, the meeting uh, between uh, George Floyd family and the president and his staff, as well as attorney Benjamin Crump. Uh, and uh, I've been in touch with CK and, and she's promising uh, to try to give us a few minutes and just to give us that kind of eyewitness uh, picture. Uh, but, but you, you, you know what, so, down what happened this afternoon. So, so cool House. about Biden, who, who the guy, bless his heart, has so much compassion for people who are in these situations. And he, you, he just speaks with compassion. But the fact that at the end of the day, he has nothing to offer these people. Nothing but I'm sorry and thoughts and prayers, you know. And well, he does have bill. something concrete. He has yeah. something. It's the bill that he wants to get passed. Uh, and they understand that, you know, this is politics and this is the Republican Party. And it's also indicative of what needs to be done next, not just the signing of this bill. And that is the, the most important thing. But also what ha what needs to happen is people need to register to vote so that when it does come time for the the u.s senators to come up for re-election next you year you their asses out right 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 yeah there you because go the republicans i think their plan is um not to agree with anything that biden puts on the table nothing yeah i, I mean, mean nothing they're, not they're, anything. they're the party nothing. of no yeah they're the party of no and will be the party of change when we get back in in power yeah and like you said if we can if if people can register to vote and you know the, the main thing they did was we lost so let's count the votes again they've already decided to count the votes in georgia yeah which, which will yeah. be the fifth time <laughs> <laughs> maybe the fifth time is a charm for them not yeah. but i think um, what they're what they're doing simply is to uh, count the votes and to know that they will disrupt or damage the voting uh, machines so that they won't be replaced in time and which is what happened in Arizona. Mm -hmm. They can't use those machines anymore, which means Arizona has to buy more and they may not be purchased in time. 
So yeah, and it, the other thing is the laws that these state legislatures have passed in order to prevent people from being from able voting. to vote. Right. Um, so we have to get we have to get out there early and register and and be present. So Put on that your depends <laughs> lunch. <laughs> Yeah, and, and don't some, depend on anybody to bring you yeah, lunch or and water. And something to sit on and be prepared to wait for a long time. You remember and that vote. video? Be I think it was a woman in Texas. I think she was in Houston, and she had like her whole um, food on a in a in a pool cart. So <laughs> she had her food and stuff in 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 the canisters and and what have you, and she could sit on it as well. Ready, as she was uh, waiting in line. She was ready. She had a she had a vote wig on. And, and and all of that stuff. So um, if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. And 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 the answer is getting as many people registered and and to make sure that you're on the rolls for these very important elections. Because even now there are important elections going on, especially uh, in the metropolitan areas in Fort Worth. There's a runoff election of a black woman. Um, Running against a white woman who was uh, the a, a part of the administ former administration, and people, white people are doing whatever they can in order to prevent this black woman from winning as the uh, mayor of uh, of Fort Worth. And we have somebody who is. Uh... Oh, we have CK. Oh, great. Hey, CK. Hi. Hi. Hello, Madam President. How are you? I am fine. I am fine. I am fine. Dude, it was so good to see you all today. It was so great to see you, CK, as you came out of the White House and you're standing there. Did you get any, did you get a feeling like this is someplace I'd like to be in the future? <laughs> no, okay. I, got a feeling that <laughs> I got a feeling that I'm happy that today happened and I'm happy that we are in this place today. And I'm sorry, there's some noise in the background okay. from Black Lives Matter um, Plaza. But no, I was just delighted to be there. I was delighted to that we finally saw today where we were able to speak to, you know, the, the family spoke to the president and the mm -hmm. vice president and I spoke to the vice president as well. We spoke uh, to um, Senator, yes, she's magnificent. Spoke to um, Senator Cory Booker, Senator Graham, Senator Scott, okay. Senator Tim Scott. I, saw, I noticed about how you made the, that call out with Senator Scott. <laughs> Senator Scott. Senator Scott. So we spoke to all of them about about the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, and the family was there. George Floyd's family was there mm. in mass, and it was just really great. Um, you know, people have to push and mm -hmm. tell their senators how important it is for the passage of this bill. We also met with Nancy Pelosi, uh, the Speaker of the House, this morning, and Congresswoman Bass, who, as you all know, Karen Bass, the, yeah. the Karen Bass, who introduced the George Floyd mm -hmm. Justice and Policing Act. So we've had a, a, a full day and meeting with extraordinary people um, who are doing extraordinary things. And what's critical is for the American people to know that their vote and their voices count. So but let me ask you this, CK, because uh, you, you mentioned uh, Senator Graham, a Republican senator. You mentioned Senator Scott, the only black Republican in the U.S. Senate. Did you get a sense of progress being made with the Republicans in order to get this bill uh, before this on the Senate floor? Um, I did get a sense of progress. I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, there's a ways to go, but they've been working extremely hard. Um, you know, Cory Booker. Um, Congresswoman Bass and others, but Cory Booker on the Senate side and, and others have been working very, very hard with them, rolled up their sleeves. They have teams of people who are extraordinarily qualified, who are working through the process. And mm -hmm. hopefully, hopefully people are optimistic that there will be a bill that will be passed hopefully soon. But, much, you know, there are no promises we just, that people just have to keep on, on working at it. Sure. At yeah. the American public, that's what you Our said today. Communities have to keep yeah. on fighting and calling the senators and say that they must pass this. People have to understand that their voice counts. Right. Calling their senators, just like their vote counts, and they've got to really do it. Now is the time if we want to see change. Otherwise, the carnage is going to continue. Let, yeah. me, let me just tell you, it is going to continue if we don't do this, if we don't do something. And the family, George Floyd family is committed to coming to Washington as much as necessary, as much as necessary. Their extraordinary attorney, Ben Crump, has been working so hard and the legal team, Chris Stewart, Justin Miller, and others just working, um, Monique Presley, just working mm -hmm. very, very hard. Yeah. And our 
66,000 National Bar Association members That's right. in our kids <laughs> as well. But I wanted to also say history was made. Kristen Clark. Yes. Kristen Clark. Yes. Um, by the way, our member. Was she was she there today? today? Was she there? Um, we, she was not there with us, but she was she was somewhere. Yeah. I'm certain celebrating yeah. because celebrating. she was confirmed. And you know, this is this is history that's been made. Mm -hmm. So the stars are aligning, but the fight continues. Yeah. Jay and was gonna ask a question there. I was gonna about. ask how much of the how much of the, the original bill as a Jay, we lost you. But I'm thinking you're asking how much of the original bill that Karen Bass constructed, do you yes. think? Okay. Yeah, how much of the bill that Karen Bass uh, um, uh, in, introduced as opposed to where they are now? And will it be as strong if they pass, you know, what is pe what people are calling a watered down version of the bill? Well, it's hard to say right now. I don't I don't think anyone's going to go down, go for a watered down version mm -hmm. of the bill. I can tell you that because there's a need for meaningful change. That's why they're still negotiating. Um, because if one wanted a watered down bill, probably it could have been passed already. Right. So I think that um, we have to be optimistic. We have to keep on fighting. We must keep calling our senators. We must make sure our voices are heard. This is critical. The next few days, few weeks, critical for people to, to call their senators. All you have to do is place a call and say, we want this bill passed. We right. need to have it passed because it's going to make a difference. But it's not going to stop there. I mean, we have to also fight at the state level. The yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Have, yeah. There's a lot. Our grassroots effort. And by the way, we need to vote. We need to vote for people. <laughs> yeah, we need interest. to register I mean, to vote. You know, right. We need to register to vote. Keep on voting because you know where people stand on issues. Mm -hmm. Don't vote people in who you feel are not going to be advocates on your behalf. Well, looking at the bill, um, from looking at the bill, what is a, a couple of things that stand out to you that you think are really necessary that we must pass in the bill. Well, you not, know, ending, ending racial racial profiling, you know, right. ending the knock warrants, ending, you know, and insisting on the cameras, ending, you know, the chokeholds, all of right. the, if you think about the things that result in the carnage and the murder of black and brown people every Ooh. single day. That and what that. about qualified immunity, CK? Do you think that will find its way into the bill? Um, I think it will on some version, yes, I do. But, you know, it's hard to tell because yeah. they're still negotiating. But I, I, I hope that in some form, it will. And we I have someone, uh, before we let you go, we have Summer is saying they can pass a bill in less than two months to protect the Asian population. However, black people have been beat for over 400 years, still can't get anything passed to protect black people. Well, this is what I say, this is what I say. There's an irony to all of that, but we have to keep fighting. Right. We cannot, we, we don't need to be sidetracked of what on 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 any of those arguments even if they're valid mm -hmm. we have to keep fighting because we have an opportunity right we have an opportunity and um and and we must not um waste this opportunity we must keep fighting because you know our our journey in this country has not been easy it's not going to be easy right. but i can tell you one thing without a fight we have no chance of winning but right. the great thing is, is that the support that the White House is giving this and, and, and how Joe Biden has from from 365 days ago uh, up until now. And, the and way we are now, right. yeah, 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 because you never you you never would have had this with the Trump administration. Oh, God. Oh, at God. All. Oh, God. At all. At all. We, so we, we saw gotta, what happened when he, you know, went out for a photo op across the street <laughs> where you were, CK, right. uh, you know, with the with the upside down Bible. Um, so, CK, I uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I saw you on on TV, and I was like, ah! and so and, and, and you responded. So, thank you so much for coming on, and appreciate your representing and and giving us uh, your bird's eye view of what well, happened there in the White House today. Well, Sybil, as I told you, um, anytime you need me or want me to speak, I'm going to do whatever, you know, my feet were hurting and everything. Well, you had three hour shoes. You had three hour shoes. Remember, we talked about this. Yeah. I had on my three hour shoes, but we five hours into it. So there's a little disconnect. There's a disconnect. There's a little situation going on. I just want y'all to know. So now, yeah, if I can so, find a if I can find a masseuse for you right now to work on those feet and to perhaps uh treat you to an adult beverage, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sybil, it's always great. So great to see you all and thank you for inviting me. 
Thank bye you bye. for coming on. We appreciate it. The one and only C.K. Hoffler, president of the National Bar Association. She was there today at the White House. She was in the, the house. Floyd family. She was in the big house. Yes. And it would have been different her. had I got in there. First of all, I'm going to take something to show everybody out. Yeah. There. You know, yeah. You know me. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. take a pen or a cup or something. Right <laughs> <laughs> but she did not. She, uh, you know, well, she could have, you know, but I, I, I don't think that she did. Um, Jay, we haven't even gotten through a lot of the news today, but I do want to um, share and, uh, and perhaps we'll get into it uh, as we get into the What You Need to Know newsletter. But also, I want to give this trending video today, um, the trending video, and, and people have seen it, but the, 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 uh, the story continues uh, to travel around the country. And this is something that happened in a New Jersey restaurant uh, about a week ago, if not less amount mm -hmm. of time, if not a shorter amount of time. A young girl gave birth to a, a baby and, and came into the restaurant in New Jersey and handed the baby over to a couple. Uh, do we have that video? Wow. She looked a little bit desperate. Um, and as you can see, they're, they're giving the captioning and a customer happened to be CPR trained and asked if uh, she could help the girl. And you're not, obviously you're not seeing the girl, but you do see someone attending to the baby who was CPR trained. You know, the, I think the sad part about it is that what this girl went through to make this decision. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, yeah. To, to, to go and on and, and that. you can and you can see her. She 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 felt, I guess, felt as though she had left the baby in safe and secure arms. Right. And then she just left. And they said that uh, you know once they uh, attended to the baby, they heard the baby uh, cry out. And they did locate the young woman not far from the restaurant. She was taken to the hospital too, it says, and the baby will be put up for adoption. Wow. Um, but also, I hope that someone is attending to this young child. The, the girl, the girl yeah. who, yeah, the mother, yeah. the mother. The mother, which is, which I hope someone when, is attending when, to her. When you have these, these Republicans trying to get rid of the abortion laws and what they don't understand about the abortion laws, it's not just abortion itself. It's so many things that are connected to these yeah, well, these, these um these laws mm -hmm. that help people in situations like that. Not to mention the clinics. Not not to mention the clinics that and they want to abolish that, but they don't want to give anything to help people who need help. Right. You know, it's yeah. that's just they're doing everything to take away Medicare and Medicaid. They're doing yeah. everything to uh, not have people have Obamacare, which is absolutely necessary. But they have no problem paying for abortion. Yeah. At all. I'm well, like, no, all. no, no, not. They don't want to pay for it. They don't want and they don't want to give people the opportunity to have this. But they don't mind killing people the same day yeah. that the state of Texas signed. The governor signed a law called the heartbeat law regarding abortions and the ability for people to have them in the state of Texas. They also executed a man that very night, a black man. Well, and so you right. don't. Is it Georgia that came up with a law that. They um they found out that um they were they found out that the medicine that they were using to execute people yes. was unconstitutional. So you can either choose by that's no firing Jay, squad that's, or that's your state, South Carolina, last week. Well, it's Jay. either firing squad or what is it? I can't think of it. Uh, it's by uh execution by firing squad or the electric chair. Electric chair, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we can't we we can't figure out how to execute safely. It, it's yeah, like you say, it's it's very crazy. Um, so uh, once again, to get back to the to the trending video, which is brought to you by HotterThanAMofo.com, want people to realize that we are in a critical condition in this country in terms, and and I think a, a lot of our values and the laws are are, are totally off base. Um, but please, if you know, uh, if you can just tell us, uh, if you know any more information on this young girl um, and, and was she taken care of, because that really is, I, I hope that somebody is looking out for her as much as they are, as much because as they're, two the baby. Baby. they're right. two babies. Yeah. Um, she was obviously a very young 
girl uh, gave birth to this child and, and but what, she but needs as much help as look at that, What a bold decision because you know how yeah. many mothers are, are, are bringing yeah. harm to babies yeah. uh, that they that they bring into this world. And she knew to take it somewhere, to take, right. not take it, to take this baby somewhere where it could be helped. Right. Um, and, and as opposed to leaving it wherever the baby was born, wherever she right. birthed this child, she could have just left it there. Um, and, yeah. and, and maybe she knew about the laws, you know, where you can, you can leave it at a church or at a firehouse or someplace like that, a police station. And um, I guess also the question comes up uh, to, to, uh, to being, where was the father? Yeah. Where, where was yeah. the father? Yeah, we don't know the circumstances. We don't know the circumstances. Surrounding right. any of this. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Jay. So now it's time for the What You Need to Know newsletter. And I'm going to sneak in. Oh, I'm sorry. Mrs. Davidson on Facebook says she's 14 and will not be charged. And so she feels like it will be handled decently. I do hope so. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fourteen years old. Um, that was the that was the age that I heard too. Um, but um, in the system, I hope she doesn't get lost in the system because right. uh, she needs uh, far more help uh, than than you know just saying, "Oh, poor girl." Yeah. And 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 she won't be charged. There's much more to this. But thank you, Ms. Davidson, for that update. Um, Jay, I wanted to sneak in a couple of other things that happened. Um, as uh, C.K. Hoffler mentioned, uh, and, we'll t and this is going to be in the What You Need to Know newsletter tomorrow, uh, Kristen Clark will be the first Black woman to head the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice. And uh, this is a long time coming. Long and, time uh, coming. finally confirmed by the Senate uh, this afternoon. So You know, to, pick to piggyback on what the, the person who texted a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. where nobody is saying, I mean, at, at, least, at least I'm not saying, that um, you know, um, Asian rights shouldn't be addressed. Of course, yeah. We're we're not saying that, but I mean, <laughs> four hundred years. Yeah, I and mean, and, and I'm not rights. saying that the Asian Asians have not been addressed before for the what they did. You know, they put them in concentration camps and yeah, um, and yeah. and all and of that no during World War II. But man, when when you have some of these laws on the book, uh, just like this law right now, why, why the hesitance? Why the hesitance yeah. for when it when it comes to us? And you know, it's really um, sad. And speaking of laws on the book, they're going to bring Donald Trump. Uh, his, his situation is now going before a grand jury. The prosecutor in the Trump criminal probe is has convened a grand jury to hear the evidence and weigh potential criminal charges. This was a report uh, that was filed by the Washington Post this afternoon. It's so funny. Uh, I know you remember the movie Capone. Remember the movie Capone? Remember when Sean Connery picks up the dead man and he says, mm -hmm. yeah, you're a tough guy. Yeah. You want to tell me what I want to know? And he shoots a guy <laughs> in the head. And yeah. the bookkeeper, which is Alan, is Alan Weissman, is his mm -hmm. name? Yeah, Who Weissel. Is the bookkeeper? He says, I'll tell you what I want to know. <laughs> what happened in yeah. <laughs> Yeah, his, Weisselberg's uh, ex daughter in law is singing. Yes. They expect Weisselberg to the sing. Man is yeah, seventy something years old. Yeah. he's not gonna. He's not gonna take the fall for Donald Trump. But this is what I was saying today. Show you how stupid Trump is. He could have pardoned everybody. <laughs> he could have. Why wouldn't you pardon the guy who's got all the information? It's just that's just stupid. But Why that's ego too, Jay. He just knew. He just knew that this wasn't going to touch him. It no, wasn't going to come near him. I tell you what him. he did. He would have yeah. pardoned his kids, but he was so yeah. sure that he would win the election because a pardon would have been very bad on the election. He, he, but he, he still could have pardoned lost. after he lost. Yes, yes he was still yes. in office. He could. He still could. He could have had a whole list of people to pardon. Not to what mention a, the, the, the list. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, here it is. Like having a get out of jail card and you don't use it. What's right, this? right. Until the game is over, you're like, oh, I should have. Oh, yeah. no. Um, the panel was convened recently and will sit three days a week for six, six months. months. Six months. And it's and it's an easy case to find, Sybil. It's so yeah. easy. You file your taxes, you get loans. You file your taxes and you get loans. If the numbers don't match up, you go to jail. Yeah. You go yeah. to jail. You can't deflate your property for your taxes and inflate it to get a loan. Right. You're gonna go to jail. Right. You know, <laughs> and what and speaking of jail, 
all you people with that PPP money and you don't have a business, oh boy, you're gonna go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's, but but on the other side, there's some great stories of people who um, have done good things with that money. Good things with their PPP yeah. money, right. Um, so they say that uh, Cyrus Vance, who is the district attorney, the Manhattan district attorney, uh, he has, it shows that he clearly believes he has evidence of a crime. If not, uh, the, the grand jury will oh, not he's have got, he's got plenty of evidence, Sybil. And they it's, say that the probe and public disclosures made during related litigation, his investigators are scrutinizing his business practices before he was president, including whether the value of those properties of the Trump organization owning and, and what goes on there. So this is, like I said, there are going to be other cases that are going to be presented. Uh, but we've said, this, months, we said but, this once and we'll say it again. The dumbest thing Trump did was to become president of the United States, mm -hmm. because now people were looking at him. He was getting away with this for years. We're right. talking 20, 30 years, he's been doing this. Not only did he do it, hell, his daddy did it. So his he got dad, it from his yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah. He, got, he got how to operate from his dad. Once you become president, you know, now it explains why he was holding his taxes. Mm -hmm. They have his taxes. <laughs> right, right. They have them. <laughs> Absolutely right. They got them. But they got, it. you know, it's probably what they, you know, when they found that one last piece, I got, we got them. <laughs> and uh, I think that that's going to be the case here. Yeah. Um, so as we move forward, um, I wanted to talk about this one thing about your friend and his Rand Paul. Rand Paul, I keep telling you, Simone, now you understand why his neighbor beat his ass. We don't know <laughs> what it was about. So, but, but some of the dumb shit that comes out of Rand Paul, well, you know, I've had the virus, so I'm immune. And doctors have been saying that <laughs> right. just because you have the virus doesn't mean you can't catch it again right. if you don't get vaccinated. I mean, and but Republicans need stupidity to keep going. And they need to say shit that goes totally against whatever Joe Biden is doing. Right. Whatever it is across the board, you know. And he's a doctor. He's, he a a doctor. he's an ophthalmologist. He's yeah. doctor, but he didn't see that ass whooping coming. <laughs> well, here's here's the latest thing with Rand Paul, with your friend Rand Paul. Um, FBI investigating a suspicious package filled with white powder bearing an image threatening violence that arrived at his home yesterday. I wouldn't Kentucky. put it past him sending it to himself. You know, I thought about that too, Jay. Yeah. I, I I really did, um, because he's he's just angry at everyone. Yeah, so yeah. outside of the envelope was a picture of a bruised and bandaged Rand Paul uh, <laughs> with a gun to his head and a threat pr printed beneath it. I'll finish what your neighbor started, you mf -er. Somebody's keeping up with the news. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, of course, would, is in I reference to his neighbor this. beating him up in 2017. Yeah, his, his neighbor whooped his ass, not beat him up. Whooped his ass. A beat up is different, Sybil. An ass whooping is what Rand Paul got. But I wouldn't put it past Rand Paul to get sympathy because he said some stupid stuff. Right. And this is a way to get sympathy. And if and if somebody is threatening his life, I hope that this person is found and prosecuted. But you know, I'm no I'm no fan of Rand Paul and haven't been for a while, you know, to say the stuff that he's saying. And what they don't know is when you say dumb shit like this. Mm -hmm. This enables people to go, well, Rand Paul's not getting the vaccine, so why should I? Right. You know, 53% right. of Republicans believe that we shouldn't get vaccinated. Yeah, who are polled. They told, uh, yeah. I think that was a CNN poll most recently. Yeah. They told them that they are not, they're not going to get the poll and, and get the vaccine, rather. Um, so Rand Paul said that he takes these threats immensely seriously. So that's that's big. Um, he says it's reprehensible that Twitter allows C list celebrity C list celebrities to advocate for violence against me and my family. This must stop. Now get this, Jay. He said just this weekend, Richard Marks the singer from the 80s, called for violence against me, and now we receive this despicable powder-filled letter. Uh, the American singer tweeted over the weekend, I'll say it again, if I ever meet Rand Paul's neighbor, I'm going to hug him and buy him as many drinks as he can spoon. <laughs> now, that's not, it's funny, but it's that's not right. Not, that's it's not funny. saying, it's funny. that's not a threat. It's just that <laughs> I, it's all he's saying, Sybil, is I'd like to meet the guy who beat your ass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's what he's saying. <laughs> and and buy him as many drinks as he can say, if the guy beat your ass again, I'll pay his bill. And what about all the stuff that Trump said? Remember at oh, the rallies? Yeah, yeah. If you beat him up, I'll pay your bail. Yeah, he, yeah, uh, yeah. Make sure yeah. you don't bow their heads when they get in police cars. Yeah, and don't, throw don't them tell them to watch your hand. Face. None of that. <clears throat> yeah, you're absolutely right. Those are things that Donald Trump said <laughs> on those all of those rallies where he just kind of rambled well, for hours hope, on end. Uh, I'm not hoping that he gets beat up again, but if he does, I hope they beat that Jerry curl out of his fucking head. Right? <laughs> Those are his natural locks. No, it's not simple. No. <laughs> um, so also in the What You Need to Know newsletter today, we talked about uh, the auditing of Georgia 2020 presidential election absentee ballots. Here this we go the, again. Yep. This is what you were referring to. In December, four electors in Georgia, led by the co-founder of a group called Voters Organized for Trusted Election Results in Georgia, that's got to be a lot on your business card, filed a lawsuit. And they alleged that there were counterfeit ballots counted and recounted by officials in Fulton County. And of course, Fulton County is Atlanta. And, and that's where most of the black folks live. They said it does not seek a particular election result. But it's always a problem when they lose. It's never oh. a problem when they win. And this is know. this is uh, this is like what's going on in Arizona. Arizona. They're recounting right. millions of ballots from the election. And this company called Cyber Ninjas <laughs> have traced. I, they're they're looking for traces of bamboo on the ballots so that they can show some sort of Chinese conspiracy. They're looking for bamboo traces in in the paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looking for a conspiracy with China. With China. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, so, it's just... so it's coming your way, Georgia. They're going to be yeah. doing this the same yeah. thing. Just bananas. Um, the coronavirus update as of today 50% of the American public is fully vaccinated. Really good. That's really good. You know, shout, That's out, really good. shout out to uh, President um, Biden for. You know, saying that I'm gonna vaccine this many, vaccinate this many people in this many days, and damn mm -hmm. it, he did it. You know, yeah. And the, what are you gonna do about the Republicans who have decided not to get vaccinated? Well, you know, you know I was listening to CNN last night, and uh, and like you, listening to CNN, mm -hmm. um, and uh, on Chris Cuomo's show, he was interviewing the former your friend Chris Christie, the former governor of New Jersey, and Chris Christie is one of those who has been fully vaccinated and is encouraging the the Republicans to get vaccinated. He says it's like you said, fifty three percent say they're not going to, but he says uh, that you know they are. There are a number of Republicans who are really working in order to encourage people to but get here's vaccinated. Here's my problem I have with Republicans: they they're wishy washy in terms of we'll be a we'll be for this because it affects me, mm -hmm. but we'll be against that because it affects you. Right. You right. know. This, the police law is, for instance, you know, even with um, your girl Liz Cheney, you know, Liz Cheney's not our friend. She right. never has been our but friend. But she is the enemy of our enemy. So She's that the enemy of our friend. enemy, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. only because they kicked her ass out and she went against Trump. But what she... She constantly voted with she, him. She supported right him 90 board. plus percent of the time. At every time, you know. And now she's playing the victim that Oh, I'm going around. She's doing the Liz Cheney "Woe Is Me" tour. Yeah, I don't give a shit, you know, because at the end of the day, she's a Republican. Not saying all Republicans are bad, but that's a bad one. That's a bad. One. <laughs> don't fall for Liz Cheney. And don't shit. forget who her dad is. Don't forget who her dad is. Yeah, she, he yeah. shot a man. <laughs> and got away with it, which is what most white men do. Um, <laughs> Dick Cheney, the former vice president yeah. of the United States, and, and uh, he shot a man in the face and went, "Whoops!" Yeah, like, oh, you okay? Keep, let's keep going. Uh, somebody, somebody, go back and take a look at that guy. So you're absolutely yeah. right. There's, there's a lot of yeah, sketchiness, don't fall for but there's some sketchiness amongst the Democrats too. Let's at not. At the end of the day, she's a Republican. The Republicans stick together, you know. And I'm not blaming them for for what they do. It's what they do. You know, look at look at how she voted with Trump across the board. Yep. And only when she spoke out against Trump 
she gets put out. But yeah. look at the voting record. Well, she got put out of her her high ranking oh, position. Yeah, her committee, right, she's, right. You know, she's yeah. she still got a job, mm -hmm. uh, but her, her biggest <laughs> job is going to be to win for re-election right. in in Wyoming. Um, so Jay, here's a story that our social activist Coy Malone um, worked on a, a few months ago, and we interviewed this young woman. Her name is Diamonds Ford, and Coy gives an update on their situation. And this is back in February. Uh, Diamonds Ford was shot at what was believed to be uh, an intruder. Uh, and she called 911 uh, when the officers were trying to uh, serve a warrant and they failed to properly identify themselves. Uh, now she and her husband are still facing charges from the September 2020 event. He and shot said, the policeman thinking they were intruders. They were intruders. And right, they did right. and, and like Breonna Taylor, they did not identify themselves uh in, in that case. And so she is she and her now husband are still trying they're to still in jail. Oh, they well, were in no, jail. They were. Um, but now they're eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars behind with all of the money they've had to spend Ooh. in getting out and they go back to court on the 1st of June. So we will get an update uh, well, from them. It's always a crime when, they, when we make a mistake, never a crime when they make a mistake. Right. You know, how many policemen and what the guy got shot in his house, eating ice cream, the no knock warrant, and all of these cops went free yeah. without a, well, you know, without a, without any, um, without any problem so yeah let's hope that when they go to court next week june 1st uh to have all the charges dismissed um right. that they really? will be uh but they but in the meantime they've got all of this that's going on both in the adults as well as as their teenage daughter uh and saying that they're all suffering from ptsd which is you know that's real uh, and uh, so this will, even after the charges are dismissed, let us pray, um, they will still have- You'll still be affected by yeah. it, right? Yeah. Because I think they were in jail for like six well, months. Well, he, he was, uh, she was in, but she was eventually, uh, she was able to to get out, but he right. was in long after. And so right. um, this, is, uh, this is absolutely one of the worst conditions. And um, this happens, well, now we're looking at what, about, nine months ago uh that last, last year wasn't it yeah it was september yeah, last of last year. year yeah yeah so um we will keep you updated on that and jay i thought about you in our business uh and finance section uh baby boomers are taking over the internet with online spending because you are the online spending king and baby boomers are those born between what, 46 and 1964 or 44 and 64. What, what, um, what happened to us, Sybil, was mm -hmm. we had nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of us didn't like who we were with. <laughs> you know, and one way to get some self-satisfaction mm -hmm. was to have a package come to that <laughs> fucking door Every, i don't know i don't know if you day. know this but to see that truck come by mm -hmm. with some shit that you ordered civil is such an uplifting i mean i told that guy that truck guy hey man don't pass this house <laughs> without without <laughs> dropping out something like that. You, you got a truck full of shit i don't just grab something <laughs> but it you know Shout, first of all, shouts out to the baby boomers for learning to use the internet. Well, that's you a know. big thing too. Yeah. Absolutely. Shouts out to us because I tell you, my sister, <laughs> only maybe three years ago, she she got away from the flip phone and mm -hmm. now she's, you know, all of her, when she calls you, it's like that. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> Sis, could you back up just a little bit? <laughs> Ricky! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it's just it's it's something they've discovered, and, and it's a it's a it's it's some sort of relief that we found that we couldn't go out. We could have things delivered. Yeah. Not only have we ordered from, we've done with food. We we, we increased yeah. our food orders. And if you're in business, which is what I'm in, that's the uh, that's the audience that's the yeah. audience you go. They after. have the disposable they have income. The fun. Yeah. Yep, that's yep. where the money resides. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it is uh, the uh, baby boomers identify nearly 9 million baby boomers wow. identify as African-American. Right. 9 million African-American baby and, boomers. 
and civil, we're not buying a lot of stuff from African Americans. <laughs> but no, we're not. No, we're buying most of our stuff from them. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of African Americans who have businesses online, and I've spoken to them, they're struggling. People are not buying their yeah. products. You know, shout out to uh, we buy black. I do. Yeah. And uh, shout out to those folks who are and, and like J. Anthony Brown um, and, and that are out there doing business online. Um, do we have somebody commenting? OK, here we go. OK, uh, Joylin says, as I open my new shoes from Amazon. Right. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Enjoy. I want to tell people who are, who are. Oh, OK. All right. Mrs. Uh, Davidson says, I have a package at my door right now. <laughs> She probably she can't wait to get home and, and or to, for this to be over for her to go and open that door for I me. know it's such a joy. And that civil, it doesn't even matter if it's the wrong thing, you know, right? Because you can send it back and get it replaced. Um, <laughs> I forgot my thought right now. Okay, so okay, okay. Well, uh, I did. Oh, want I wanted to say this. Yes. I wanted to say this to a lot of online businesses, mm -hmm. and I'm not taking away from Amazon, but ShipStation is a very helpful way to send your packages out. And there are other fulfillment companies in your area, especially if you shop, if you have a local business mm -hmm. that will fulfill your products and send them out. They don't all have to go through Amazon. A fulfillment company is a company that you, for people who don't know, where you take your product and they will ship it out for you. So right now you might not be having that enough business to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a fulfillment company like Amazon, but there are other fulfillment companies that you can look into. Look at you, look Mr. at me, Mr. look at me, Mr. Advisor, Mr. Yep. Consultants. <laughs> um, congratulations as we move to entertainment. Not sure how you feel about this, but congratulations to your girl Tasia. What she? What happened? Pregnant? And no, no, not just pregnant. She delivered. Monday. Oh, hell no. Yeah, over the weekend. Nobody after. told me nothing. <laughs> That's the very pregnant Tasia delivered Congratulations. A, a baby Congratulations. girl uh, Sunday. And uh, this a girl or boy? A little girl. Oh. A little girl. Congratulations. Um, this is with her new husband, Kendall Taylor. Yeah. Okay, Sybil, so, we know. Right. Um, this is uh, <laughs> this is uh, her her husband that she married after knowing him for two weeks. I'm not sure if he ever sent her purple roses. And uh, a, and, and a ham. <laughs> and a ham. <laughs> That's how you get them, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> But apparently his worked better, uh, yeah. whatever it was. Uh, Congratulations, Sandy. Also, uh, I don't know if you know, but tonight they're having a, uh, uh, they're honoring Paul Mooney at the, um, uh, I think it's the Laugh Factory. Okay. You know, it's amazing how the black comics always go to the white clubs. To you know, it's, it's, come on, give me a break with this. You know, and I'm not- and If anybody was pro-black. <laughs> It was Paul Mooney. It was Paul Mooney. <laughs> Paul Mooney got to be there. I can't believe you niggas got me up here with this. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, you gave us a great video. You sent a great video last week when we had the salute to Paul. What story with, did I tell you about Paul Mooney? About when you were in the club, uh, you went to see him. I think it was oh, a oh, Carolina. I have another one. I have okay. Another one. okay. I'm working in Chicago. I don't remember the name of the club, but Paul Mooney. And Eddie Murphy came in, you know. Yes. And and the rule is, if a big star comes in, they go directly to the stage. Mm -hmm. I was a headliner. The the middle act had already gone up, and the the guy came back and says, Paul Mooney and Eddie Murphy, and and, and he didn't say, can they go up? He said, they're going up. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Mooney did an hour. Eddie Murphy did like an hour and a half. The show wasn't over. I went up next, and I said. What you saw tonight, you didn't even pay for that shit. So <laughs> whatever I do, first of all, it ain't going to be as funny, but, but you got your money's worth, all right? <laughs> and it was, if not funnier. It I'm was a sure. great night. It was a great night. It was. And Jay, how long ago was that? I just lost you. 
You you jiggled some. Okay, there you go. And how long ago? I put the wires together. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> how long ago was that? Oh, for the oh, that was years ago. Yeah, Eddie Murphy had just did Forty Eight Hours or something like that. Oh so wow, he was oh, a big wow. star. Yeah, him. And, well, what the other story about Paul Mooney is? Paul Mooney uh, for a long time didn't want anybody to know that he was bald headed, mm -hmm. and he would always wear his hat. Yeah, He'd always wear a hat. And so Eddie Murphy and Arsenio and some of the other comedians would wait. When they were on the road, they would wait till Paul, they knew Paul was in the bed, mm -hmm. and then they'd go knock on his door, and they hit, just a minute, hold on, just a minute. <laughs> hold on, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> but I can say, man, he was always nice to me. I mean, he was super nice to me. Not always everybody else, but he right. was always nice right. to me. Right, and, and, and told people, don't, can't you see I'm talking to my friend? That's <laughs> yeah, the story. Get, get out of my face, don't you see me talking to my friend? <laughs> That's the story you put on tape last week for us. Um, and it was great. Melanie Camacho and Damon were uh, on with me on Thursday, and they were absolutely great. That was nice. And yep. I went to see Lunell Saturday night at the Arlington Improv. How was she? Great, huh? She's, She's back. She's so funny. She's back. Yeah. Um, you know, she had two knee replacements. She was moving around the stage and, you know, practically doing flips and yes. stuff. Uh, <laughs> I was there at uh, with Sherry Shepard. And uh, it was just great to see them both out, out there. They, Sherry came to support Lunell and, um, and invited the rest of us to come along. And so it was great. It was really. And Lunell, you know, spoke her, about her relationship with Paul and, and all wow. of that. It was great. Wow. Absolutely. Truly, great. truly be missed. Truly yeah. Missed. Yeah. All right, J. Anthony Brown, I hear that uh, assisted living is on its way back to the screen. Tonight. It's tonight. tonight. It's tonight. Assisted living season two. We're praying for season three, and if you pray for season three, mm -hmm. pray for season four. Okay, <laughs> uh, don't 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 waste your prayers on just season two. We want you to pray for season three, four, and five. Okay. Okay. All right. Because you got an eighteen bedroom home in Atlanta to pay. Get out of here, Sybil. Get out of here. <laughs> also, I want to do a shout out for my son's business. He opened a new business. It's called Eight Twenty Four. Auto Body Repair, it's uh, Riverside Drive in uh, Los Angeles, California. Uh -huh. Please support my son. That way I don't have to give him a loan, okay? <laughs> Please. 824, which is Kobe's numbers, right? 824. Uh -huh. uh, and so please, uh, he's my son. Uh, and my daughter has a uh, beauty shop. And my other daughter does... Um, um, is teaching. So she's a all, teacher. She's a principal. <laughs> she's a principal. Yeah. 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 Can you believe these genes produce <laughs> a principal? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. Uh, a, a, a tech school uh, graduate. Yes. And go to hotterthanmofo.com to get my hot sauce. It's in the airports. It's in Birmingham, uh, Birmingham, Mobile, and Atlanta. All right. In the airports, but also you can order it at Hotter Than a Mobile. You have new flavors? Uh, yeah. I'm coming out with. Um, Mango and pepper. Okay. Which was remember I had the peach and pepper. Yeah. Now I have mango and pepper. Okay. And uh, I will be able. This is cool. I found a company that will make little small packets of nuts, so I'll be able to pass out samples of my nuts. And the slogan on the bag says, "Please try my nuts." <laughs> <laughs> Not even, not even a warning. Please try my hot nuts. Just please try my. Please, yeah. Well, I was gonna go with put my nuts in your mouth, and uh -huh. I was talked out of that one. Who, who talked you out of that? <laughs> my crew, my crew. Oh, not your minister. No. <laughs> and by the way, let me thank my crew. That would be many words. My, my niece, niece Tabitha, my, my Isha, and uh, Verlinda. That's my crew. They've been very helpful in helping us elevate the company. So thank you. And, and you have a crew too. Your, com yeah. your, your company is elevated. It's elevated. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, so good luck with the house hunt. Oh, so much is on tonight. The Mike Tyson special is on ABC at 8, says wow. Nicole um, on Facebook. But you know what? Most of us will be watching. Make sure you watch the other thing too. The thing about uh, um, um, Soul of a Nation. Black, um, Black Wall Street. That comes on oh, when? Yeah. Yeah, that is this week. Um, I don't have the exact date, but I know that the anniversary, the 100th year, and I hate using the word anniversary, but the yes, 100 well, years since. Green, uh, and Pine, which a lot, a lot of people, I keep saying a lot of people, but some people don't know, 
which is what the Gap Band is named after. Mm -hmm. But the but the uh, the bombing of Black Wall Street happened uh, 100 a, years ago this week. There's an extensive article. Look at me in mm -hmm. the New York Times today. So if you want to go online and read it, it's all about that, and it follows how how big this this green archer and pine was yeah. back in the day, and how they were just demolished. Yeah, it was total. Uh, hundreds of people lost their lives. Uh, lost thousands their businesses. thousands yeah. were homeless. And Jay, did you see last week the uh, the survivors of yes, uh, the, the lady one hundred and four, seven like years old, um, yeah. are still able to tell her story before a, the story. a committee right. up on Capitol Hill. So God bless them. Yeah. Uh, and and as the people continue, and shout out to Stevie Wonder who had a, a birthday party. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, come on. With candles on the cake. <laughs> and, come on, come on. Finish up, finish <laughs> come, 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 come on, come on, come on. Uh, a huh? surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Jay? What? <laughs> Shout right, out I'm to going, Stevie Wonder. I'm going to hell. Okay. I know. Okay. okay. <laughs> Did they point his face in the right direction? All right. Okay. <laughs> Me so silly. You are the silliest. Um, uh, look, oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Joylin on Facebook. Joylin Wright says, look at my sister's jewelry shop in Etsy. Simply elegant. I'm an Etsy shopper. I look for the products. Right. Okay. Simply elegant. And we just featured, uh, you know, we have a black business spotlight every Friday. In the newsletter, Jay, oh, we just okay. featured a young woman who has her business. No, on I'm not business getting fabulous. the newsletter. I'm getting the, the report, but I'd like to get the newsletter. What do you mean you're not getting the newsletter? I get the I get the what you need to know. I don't get the. Is, there's a news. Is that, is that what you? That's what about? you need to know. Is the newsletter? But I never see anything about. You know why? Okay. Because I just listen. I don't. Okay. <laughs> We do do an audio feature for people okay, yeah. like cool. Jay. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, but we did. We do every Friday. We feature a black business. Tampa Yogi's Jewels. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Look at you, y Yolanda. Are you paying these people to um, point out the time for us to give the Yogi's Jewel? Huh? <clears throat> I think it's treat people like you wanted to be treated, or something like that. Jay. Always treat people how you want to be treated. Amazing. That is today's Yogi's Jewel. Yes, ooh, yes, ooh, yes, ooh, yes, ooh, young I Jay. Know, I know. <laughs> That's you. That heifer never called on me when I knew the fucking answer. <laughs> <laughs> that could be any teacher from grade one through 12 they and beyond. Never called on me. <laughs> and, and does she have to be a heifer? Uh, yeah, this one is. This okay. one is. This one. Well, that person mm -hmm. never called on me when I knew the answer. Okay. All right. So and you never got a dinner. I never um, got a dinner. All right. And so Green never people... knew that I was so in love with her. Oh, that's right. Uh, Green. Yeah. Did I tell you her daughter approached me at the airport? Her daughter said, I've heard you talk about my mom. And I said, how is your fine ass mama? No, I didn't say that. I didn't. <laughs> You probably did. That was my that was my crush. That was your crush. That was your schoolboy crush. crush. Yeah. Miss yeah. Green. Miss Green. Uh, and uh, we will see you next week. We'll see you tonight on BET, watching you on Assisted Living, the return of Assisted Living season. And please check out David and Tamla Man's new album. It's awesome. So we should get them on. They've oh. got great music on there. We would love to have them. Call them and tell them to come on. I will definitely next week. tell them. I will definitely tell them. They, have a, they dropped a brand new album. It is awesome. It's awesome. really good. Really. Okay, so you you're gonna book that for next week? I'm gonna I'm gonna see if that well no, he can't come on when I'm on. <laughs> me, they came me, on and, before. me and Yogi already had this conversation earlier. <laughs> you can have him on. <laughs> okay. I would love to have David and Tamala Man on All right. anytime. <laughs> All right, Jay, thank you so much. Bye, Good man. luck with the house hunting. See you later. All right, Tomorrow, later. Tomorrow's Wednesday, <laughs> and Stephen Hill will be on with us. You all have a good evening. See ya. Bye.